which way it gets. Yeah, we know, we know, we know. We know, we know. Hey guys. Hey, Varen. Good morning, sir. How are you? How are you? I'm good. We're running a little late. Sorry about that. Just no, uh, it's all good. Chasing finance. That's what I've been doing all morning. Chasing finance. That's okay. That's half the battle, right? Yeah. No, what we were gonna say to you because I I'd like us to have forty five minutes to an hour. Like I don't want to rush it just because I yeah, I think the whole story you have is pretty cool. No so, rush. No rush. Well, no, because you got a hard stop at ten thirty, right? I don't want to rush your. You, you're, not gonna, well, you're not gonna I bypass did. Loblaws for us. I'm. I love you, and I know that. Yeah. And I, I and I think deep down you love me too, but it's not gonna happen. <laughs> I, I already know that. I know I am not more important than Loblaws. I it's just our Loblaws internal team. I can push them a few minutes, but I do have to talk to them about a bunch of stuff. Um, uh, we can jump right into it. How, the big difference, it's just trade management. Like I have to talk to finance and the Loblaws team to find out what the heck they're spending and where all the money's going. It's a uh, it's a wild ride in a big company. <laughs> it's a wild ride because they just send the debits and they're either vague or vague would be like a treat. Yeah. Like they're just usually a number. You're thinking, that's oh, wonderful. Can someone tell me what that number might be made up of? Well, law of laws is pretty direct. It's, we know what where they're going and we're taking this and thank you very much, right? <laughs> but it, with... The old ethical bean, I could handle that. The new ethical bean within craft, we live within three, co four coffee brands now, right? That that craft sells to any one of the retailers: Passimo, Nabob, Maxwell House, and Ethical Bean. Mm -hmm. Depending on how a particular sales team has set it up, either they differentiate by brand or they just blend it all. And um, <clears throat> another aspect of a large company is the the debit management because there's you know, probably hundreds of thousands of them are managed by an outside company. And so between my planning, the Loblaws sales team's planning across four brands and outsourcing it, you really have no idea where the stuff is being put, whether it's being kind of switched around between hmm. coffee brands because the, the sales team might say, you know, they can horse trade between Ethical Bean and Maxwell yeah. House. Right. Customer doesn't care, but, um, you know, I'm sure part of what we want to talk about today is like, how does Ethical Bean exist within this larger company? I run a small, tiny sort of arm's length company within a big one. I only have one lever, it's Ethical Bean, right? So be sure as shit that I'm chasing dollars because it all falls on my P&L at the end of the line. They, they don't care. They can blend it into, I think we have 1,500 SKUs, right? That's how many craft sells, right? So at the end of the day, if you run- puts and long, takes, right? Yeah. Yeah. Puts and takes. And if you run Loblaws, which is, I think, close to a billion dollars in sales for craft, right? Like, imagine how big the blender is, right? To try to cut stuff up. Good Lord. <laughs> well, and how easy for things to get lost, not it's seen. Lost, and, you know, and, and what at the end of the day, you know, is craft's going to look at it? If it's a billion, if it's a billion in, 20% out, that's ah, kind of the number we were shooting for. <laughs> Does it matter where it came from? I, I don't know. We're a very, very small percentage of. I'm, I'm sure, of but you, you, but you could add, you could add a nice profitability aspect that some of the other coffee brands that they carry don't. Yeah, we could. Right? Max we, is all price, buddy. Yeah, I know. All I, price. I mean, there's that you're running that sh that that shit is just coming off the trees into the roasters and out she goes. Like, I mean, there's no. Yes. There's it, nothing it, going on in that one, right? It's, it all, is, it's a slightly different process than how we make ethical yeah. beans, right? All tonnage. <laughs> that, that doesn't matter. It's just price. Crank it out. Move it out. It is. But that's why they bought us is we offer a different, uh, right. a, a different clientele. Um, we have a different um, sort of story, a different execution. Um, but yeah, we, we can deliver more margin and, and more, you know, more dollar value per turn for sure. But um, for us to get to the level where we want to be now, they're like, we are investing more in the brand in terms of marketing and uh, awareness than Lloyd and Kim ever did. Like in 10 years. Was yeah, probably, all in. No, actually, let me do some quick math. I'll be careful with the numbers. <laughs> I, we probably spent last year 
four years worth of marketing for ethical being and slightly that de different definition of, of what yeah. falls into what right. category. So that part has been um, a lot of what interests me, right? Like how can you take a brand that was got to, a, you know, with your help and all the other retailers help when you were fit London drugs got to a certain level. You, we have much more longevity and longer planning, right? Like I would live and die on the PL monthly, right? Because I had an owner that literally was like right there right. banging on my door saying, what the fuck is going on? Right. Yeah. Whereas now we, they can say, well, where do you want to be in seven years? Right. Where do you, and the amount of, um, isn't that nice though? It's nice. Yeah. It's, that's the other, that's the other side of the caveat to what I was just talking about. Right. Like it falls into these, this labyrinth of planning and finance that, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty smart guy. I mean, you're smarter, Ken. You, you've told me that. Well, Phil's the smartest one of all of us. Phil's well, <laughs> well, the smartest, but like, I'm a reasonably intelligent guy. Right. And I mean, I built the PO on a small company where like I read this stuff and it's like, I start asking questions because I'm also a bit of a contrarian, as you might recall. Yeah. I get on big calls and I'm like, who can give, who can define this acronym for me? Right. And like, I'm on a call with a lot of other intelligent people and they're like, oh, well, and I'm like, what, why don't we just use English? Right. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> because it would be a lot simpler. And I'm sure it's like when you're in university, if I'm asking the question and I'm on a call with 10 people, Two or three other people have no idea what's on this piece of paper either. You're usually not the only one in the room has no clue yeah. what we're talking about. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like in a room of 10 when the, at that level, if you're not too sure, you can bet half are probably in the same boat. Yeah. And the other half may know what the acronym means, but have no clue how to use it. Yeah, fair. So uh, it's it's one of those ones that, you know, hey. And it's no, it's no secret, like in a company this big, like the the system and the process sometimes gets in the way of, of what's right for the business. And mm -hmm. everybody knows that. And mm -hmm. what I've learned has been, it's, you know, we've been talking about this for a long time to sit down and have a chat, but it's been three years almost to the day from the, um, the acquisition. So it's been a long time now. And, um, you know, some stuff is still being worked out, which I find interesting. I thought it would all be kind of put to bed and, and filtered through whatever system that, that Kraft Heinz has. But what it was um, hard for everyone, my team here, which is about 35, 36 people, like it was a huge, you know, transformation for us and, you know, upheaval of all the systems and so on. But that company itself, right, was only two years off a massive merger of Kraft and Heinz, right? So right, right. You know, if we think of what happened to a small company, and how um, challenging it is and how amazing it was in terms of opportunities and awareness and learning, like they meshed together two enormous operations, right? right? And the people there were still coming to grips with all the new ways of being. And um, I think I've had three different presidents in Canada in the three years that I've been there. So it took them a long time and you have to be very aware of how stressful it was for them too, right? Just to, to get back up and going. And uh, I think everyone here at the Ethical Bean office where you've been a bunch of times, Ken, we were very, very fortunate through COVID to actually have a very big company um, behind us, right? Because for sure. you yeah. know how we would have been able to manage and react and support people with a smaller company, right? It was just, it was very, very, um, fortunate i think and you know i could spend the whole hour complaining about how difficult it is to work for a massive company but uh the amount of hr support and the amount of um like care that they're putting into their people has been amazing right like the amount of work that they're doing we're doing on diversity on mental health on uh, a whole bunch of stuff is uh quite frankly Incredible, right yeah, I mean, you worked for a medium-sized ish company before. Again, I worked for a very small one in TPG, but they're they're doing amazing things, right? They just had a thing yesterday about pets, right? Like we have, they, they had a whole thing about pet parenting, but I was like, this is amazing. They're like, well, we realize a lot of stuff on family, but they're you know the whole global workforce is I don't know forty five thousand people, 
And it's like, there's a lot of people who don't have kids. And so like, what about them? So they have a whole thing about vets. And I was like, that's pretty cool. That's amazing. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Pretty wild. But, but you're right. Like you, you could never, you'd never do that in little companies, right? Well, like one, from J &J, you know, right? Yeah, same, yeah. same worlds, right? It's yeah. You've got resources, you've got people. It's, they're just huge. <laughs> This, this might be one of the few phone calls that you could say, hey, J&J, &J, and J&J &J is like tiny compared to... <laughs> I think that's actually, that's kind of funny, actually, but... Um... Doing other things like two Fridays a week or two Fridays a month, they really, you're not supposed to book any internal meetings, right? Like yeah. zero meetings internally to go out to the stores, think about your business, think about projects. And part of that is they're cognizant of the fact that if they didn't do that, you'd spend all day talking to finance and talking to yeah. the, um, yeah. just that they're aware of it. Um, it's a good mental health day in a sense, in a lot of ways, right? Because it gets you out of doing the, the mundane shit that it, you could, you, to your point, you could get bogged seven days a week, 24 hours a day doing that and never get out of it. And it's it, not a fun place to be for, well, for most people. And we've all, we're all doing it right. Like the, I think I had four and a half hours in a row yesterday, maybe with one break. It's way more draining than face to face. Like that's not a revelation to anyone, but like I always tapped out and then it was two o'clock in the afternoon. Right. Um, yeah. It, it's hard to, to pull off, but um, yeah. So I don't know if you had any specific questions. I can just keep rambling on. But I don't know if anybody really wants to listen to that. <laughs> Well, no, the whole I, point I, of having you on yeah. was for this because I yeah, actually yeah. we really wanted to to have you sort of walk through, you know, um, the, the the starting up of the ethical being, how you guys got to a point where someone of that size was actually interested in you, and then what are the changes? Like what what happens when a behemoth literally comes in and and takes a little guy? Like because you know when you guys got bought by Craft, you and I had discussions, and you know you worry because yeah. large companies have a tendency to meddle which causes nothing but grief because they have no clue on small and the yeah. smarter ones say, listen, you know what? You're a little unique. Just run. We'll yeah. watch and you're going to learn our systems, but you can do your thing. So I'll go back to the story and you know it relatively well because we work together. You want to introduce them first to each other. People know who we're yeah, talking can I to. Do it. So, <laughs> your, your positions I'll never get, I'll, I'll never get anyway. So Viren, uh, Viren Malik is on the show today. Viren was, um, Viren was with Ethical Bean, which is a small local co uh, coffee company in Vancouver, uh, roaster, um, and then sold obviously all their products through retail. I got to know Viren years ago because we listed uh, Ethical Bean Atlanta Drugs, uh, got to be friends. Uh, sometimes I think I like Viren more than he likes me, but that's okay. That's a whole different podcast. But we've got to got pretty close. And what I really wanted to have Viren on for today was, was what we just sort of finished talking about is that Viren took a, a really small company um, from an entrepreneur who had a lot of um, interesting ways to do things, but a typical entrepreneur, right? And then got this company to a, a size, obviously, where someone like a craft notices it and says, you know what, shit, we've got these coffee brands in our portfolio. Be really cool to have something like this now in our portfolio. And I think what I've loved when, you know, Viren and I have talked after the acquisition was all of a sudden how resources opened up, whether it was financial, human, um, whatever it was. Um, and then some of the challenges of that too, when you went from a world where, you know, maybe you can make decisions all day and change them tomorrow morning to where the decision of today may not get implemented till six, eight months down the road. And there is no change in it. So Viren, it's really, it's one of that. I, I think, I think what would be interesting is sort of your story first, how it happened. Cause you gonna have to go Cole's nose. Cause I know you have to bugger off fairly quickly, or we can actually pick this up, uh, at another time and, and finish the podcast, but just that, and then maybe walk us into the transition into um, from ethical to craft ethical. So, I mean, I didn't do it all myself. I got to get it, say that first and foremost, right? We had um, great ownership who founded the company. They are very entrepreneurial and very um, creative in terms of how they position the brand. Uh, I had a bit more knowledge of CPG and sales and so on. So, um, it took a long time to get to the point where um, we were on anyone's radar in terms of, of um, acquisition, probably about 10 years. And then the call started to come in, mostly from venture capitalists, right, who wanted to just 
you know, put some money in, help us grow, and then flip three, four years after. That model wasn't all that appealing to myself or to Lloyd, the owner, because let's be frank, right? Venture capitalists just put 5 million bucks in 10 companies. And if one of them can sell for 25, 40 million, they got their five yeah. million for their investors. And you just have some asshole on the board of directors that you have to report to, basically. I mean, I'm generalizing, right? But No, but that's, that's probably pretty fair. It definitely shifts the way a company's sort of energy and sort of the, the HR piece, right? Because you have someone there whose sole purpose is to, to flip the company at some point in time or get the buyback after whatever the, the term of the investment is. So um, basically it came down to, I was this COO. I started as director of sales. When I was in a position to run the whole thing, it basically for a small company, it comes down to like, what's the definition of success, right? And for a while, and when you and I worked together, it was about growth, right? So we grew with your um, stores probably to the max, right? Right. Uh, I'll say we have pushed it a little past then since you left, Ken, you know. But <laughs> well, I would say there's just more stores and, you know, you're just a bigger brand now. So it's really got <laughs> shit to do with anything oh, outside man. of stuff that was yeah. not out of our control anyway. Oh, man. Imagine if we were there. Let's go down that path. <laughs> <laughs> That for sure is another step. Move on. Uh, then, and then it was like, where do you go as a Western Canadian company that has you know, great awareness and sales in the West, um, limited distribution in the East. And again, you and I spent some time in the U.S. at Trade Show, so it became growing into the U.S. And that was like, there were two goals to that. Obviously, it was just growth of the brand and awareness and anyone in packaged goods and that's all i've done for sort of 25 years in canada like the u.s market is very seductive right like it's it's amazing it's huge yeah. it's 12 times the size of canada and if you have relative success here you know the markets are not identical i think many companies have made that mistake like target coming up here and you know even us our tiny little brand going there we have to learn some some stuff right like um I think the U.S. is kind of like six different markets, right? Like we have more in, in common with people in the Northwest than someone in Seattle does with someone in Miami, right? So you can't have this blanket marketing or blanket sort of positioning and expect to do well down there in, in certain channels. The other goal of growing into the U.S. was we buy all our coffee in U.S. dollars, both our bags and our, our beans come in in. US, so like 96% of the input cost of my product is, is bought and sold in US dollars. Um, I don't know where people are who are listening to this, probably all over the world, hopefully, because you guys are so amazing, your, your breadth of connection. But uh, the Canadian dollar fluctuates. So the other thing was growing to the US so we can internally hedge ourselves and, and not have to live on the live and die on both commodity and currency markets. Um, and then as I rolled along, you know, we started to get more interest from people. They saw the brand expanding in the U.S. But, um, you know, quite honestly, it, it just became the ownership's time to, to move on, right? And uh, when it was their time, like, it wasn't craft calling. Uh, we would get calls from people. But like I said, it was mostly from the investment community. Uh, it was more a decision that it was their time to move on for, for various reasons. And so we engaged with a, a, an investment banker to go and find us some, some prospective buyers. And um, that process took better part of a year and a half, just positioning the company properly, positioning the presentation, um, doing all the due diligence in our own sort of accounting and, um, and other ways such that we were prepared to to go through this very very grueling process right in the end we had four suitors that were um very interested among the sort of 20 or 30 that we looked at and that was a decision that was made internally on on what type of company um the owners would feel comfortable putting their their brand uh into that environment or selling to and i thought that was very very cool that the owners were that um invested and, right. and like they actually gave a shit they ever gave I, mean, I, I like lloyd i mean because lloyd's an eccentric guy but i like lloyd i do i, th I think lloyd just you know i mean god bless he did a neat thing right well they i mean the money was of course a huge motivator but it wasn't For sure take it 
take anything and off they go and out the door they go. So, um, you know, that then took another year of negotiating and presenting and so on and so forth to all the various companies. And um, for me, that was very, very interesting, very, very difficult. And, um, but also a great learning experience, right? To be able to understand the complexity and the, um, the yes. level of detail that you have to do to move a company, you know, for a, you know, a significant amount of money for some, but, you know, relatively a, 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 a smaller amount for a huge, you know, international company, right? But I mean, they can buy you out of petty cash to be, you know, blunt. You know what I mean? It's not, this is a big purchase, but, you know, they're dealing with brands that are huge. Oh, huge. yeah. But a lot of detail has to go into that. Even for, for sure. And not small for a company that large. Um, so that was very, very interesting. And then, you know, I'll just kind of go into how the transition went a little bit, right? But the most important part to me was like, I had a great team of people here who, who were supremely helpful in getting us to the level to, you know, to have that transaction go through. And the hardest part for me as the, the person running this company was like, you couldn't tell people up until a certain point, right? You know, and like, I like try to pride myself in hiring good people and, um, and people that can learn and you can learn from. They're not idiots, right? Like they knew something was going on. Like some dude just shows up and is in the boardroom with Lloyd and I for like five hours for a couple of months. Like it's pretty hard not to yeah. <clears throat> And then one of the funniest parts of the whole thing was um, when Kraft came in for their 10th you know, meeting or whatever, and they came out and so on. Uh, and we were getting very close to closing. You know, everyone has to sign in just like at every office. And we have a food manufacturing facility. So people sign in. There was like eight of them came in, signed, you know, reason to be here, Lloyd, Viren, and Kraft. And they're all wearing Kraft shirts, right? And then one of them afterwards, when we were even closer, it's like, do you think they know it was us? And I'm like, uh, I'm not, are you joking? I, <laughs> I think it might have been. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> I, they're they're not idiots, right? And um, you all were wearing half t-shirts, and so I, I'm pretty sure that a few people in the office <laughs> might have clued in. Might have clued in. Um, so yeah, the the people part was really important, and um, to your point earlier, Ken, like we were a brand that they could not create in the in the company that they are. And there's nothing wrong yeah. with like we have amazing brands at Kraft, like peanut butter and ketchup and Kraft, like the numbers, you know, and you probably saw a little bit when you, you bought them, but I see all of it now and it's it's absolutely huge. mind boggling, right? Yeah, they're huge. So what I told <laughs> you team is like, you know, yes, that we're now part of a much larger company and yes, they have brands that are iconic and have been around forever, but like the only reason they bought ethical bean is because they couldn't do it on their own. Right. So, you know, look everyone in the eye, understand that we're here because they need us. Right. They're here because they couldn't build it themselves. And there's a lot for all of us to learn. Right. And I'm still learning right about finance and about how some of the stuff is set up. And so a few of my, my original team left for, for various reasons. Um, some was opportunity based, some they weren't quite as comfortable working for a massive company um and that's totally cool right but for all the people here it's like i continue to push them to like you can you can learn a lot from a massive company like this and there are some amazing people working there some of the marketing stuff that they've done over or we've done i still have the they we thing i think stuff but some of the marketing stuff that's come out of craft over the last year has been amazing right? right like you may or may not have seen it right in right in the middle of covid you know, puzzles and Dungeons and Dragons and card games, like everyone's going going through the roof. They created a puzzle that was high in ketchup and it was just red. Like it was just red, in, like entirely. And they sent it out to people and it was limited edition, right? Sign up. And they won, we, they won like, a, I remember the name of that um, advertising award. Yeah. That, but they won a bunch of them, right? Because it was like brilliant. Like people are sitting at home and like you can, and you can do the, I don't know what puzzle of an espresso machine or, you know, a Maserati or something like that, but it was just, 
It was all red. That's <laughs> awesome. That's hilarious. That's awesome. And then they came out with some of the other ones too, like uh, ice cream flavored, uh, or, uh, an ice cream that's craft dinner flavored. Like, I don't know, just all sorts yeah, of yeah. Weird right. Stuff, right. And not weird, interesting stuff. And you have uh, a lot of resources, you know, thinking about singular brands, right? That's the way everything is built at Kraft Heinz. Like there's a coffee part and there's a um, um, instant meal part and a condiment part and they break it down to brand level. So you have a lot of um, energetic people thinking only about a singular brand and um, they come up with some pretty wicked cool creative stuff. It's neat. It, um, sorry, it puts, Paul, sorry. I, no. I, I guess the interesting thing too is it puts you like ethical being before you were with a big company, you were probably having some pretty interesting conversations with retailers, but there were probably things that you wanted to be able to do or conversations you want to have about placement and things like that, that getting into craft all of a sudden, now you've got signs, right? Like, you know, yeah. any kind of like pie in the sky sort of things, all of a sudden you're like, no, no, you know what? Like now we've got Ethical Bean, which is a kick-ass brand, right? And guess what? <laughs> I've also got all these other brands that put a lot of power behind me. So now you've got to listen to what, what, you know, I'm, I'm trying well, to show who you. Or, who's not taking the craft know. call? Like in, in, well, terms of, in terms of retail, like who's not taking a craft call? Yeah. I mean, I wasn't a big fan of craft, but I still took the calls. Yeah. Still yeah. craft. Ah, listen, I left J and J and like, you know, you called retailers back and all of a sudden they, they didn't call you back as quick. Right. And you're kind of like, why, what happened? What I do? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, so now I you're a nobody like I'm the rest of a, us i'm not a 500 pound gorilla anymore right <laughs> like, damn it i'm a regular human i gotta have you noticed that very like, like what happens to that like i'm assuming the relationships you had are always good because you're very friendly but yeah. this had to be a whole different yeah and the, there's a couple ways to look at that right if you if you think about it like a large company buying a small company there's a lot of um ones that have not gone well right and then I think I, it wasn't to you because I think you were gone at the time on the buying desk, but I, people would say like, oh, holy shit, fear and craft. Mah, mah, mah. And I'm like, well, you know, how are your, how are your sales of Ben and Jerry's, right? How are your sales of Burt's Bees? How are your sales of um, Annie's Pasta? And they're like, oh, fuck, they're great. I'm like, exactly, right? So that's where my mind goes as opposed yeah. to... Um, I can't remember the cereal blend that well um, you could go this, kashi you like go balance bar so yeah, but yeah, those yeah. were in the early days yeah. of these transitions from multinationals buying small companies not understanding that you can't it, it's a square and a round peg right if you're going to buy a small company like you guys and a, and a national play natural play part of me you got to let them be yeah you could impose the rules because you're the your dad you get the rules of the house but let the kids play in any room they want you just sort of control a little bit of it. But the problem with Kashi, for example, is Kellogg's went in and tried to redo Kashi. Yeah. As opposed to just, if Kashi had been left alone, they probably would have been fine. Yeah, and I think there has been some amazing wins in terms of, you know, the scale and the access to buyers and the access to larger programs that open up shelf space and um, right. advertising opportunities and so on. Like, I mean, again, you just follow the money and, we have lots of it to throw around with the big, the but big, it makes a difference though, obviously. Right. Yeah. It makes a big difference. However, what I didn't realize, and uh, I was about a year and a half into it, it um, became a, a, a very clear reality to me uh, was that, you know, and I'll go back to when I worked construction and my foreman Leon had a shirt that said, if you're going to run with the big dogs, you can't be like a puppy. Right. And it's like, so we were running with the big dogs and you know what happened? I got delisted in a bunch of places. Aww. Not anything ethical bean did because Kraft was doing some stuff, taking price on other things. And the entire value of my portfolio was worth less than the 2% price increase on some other much larger categories. And I was like, but, 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 and they were like, yeah, sorry, Darren, you know, when it went really well over here, here's the other side you're gone and we're taking price on xyz overall we're winning and i'm like but 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 that's like eight percent of all my sales and they're like well yeah, sorry right yeah. for us it's puss and takes yeah. i know that your world just took on a whole lot of water <laughs> you lost your front tire but 
hey, you know, like, yeah. Uh, what it's tough. No, it's tough. And like, I always like to learn stuff is for, for me six years ago, that would have been, it still was horrible. Like I'm still talking about it here right. now. Fucking sucks. But like, it would have been so impactful to the business and it would have triggered a whole bunch of other stuff. Like the next- well, Potentially it's crippling. But yeah, but the next time relisting windows come around with said retailer, I'm not gonna say who it is. That's fine. We'll be right back in there. Right? Right. Like we're shuffling a deck of cards. They have 52 cards and those are all the craft brands. We got we got put out on this deal, this hand, but like you know what? We'll be right back in there next time. Because the contact to that buyer is there weekly. Whereas to your point, Phil, I could have been, you know, if it wasn't for the fact that we were in East Van, you know, 14 years ago, I would have called Ken a thousand times and I wouldn't have heard back from him, right? So. Yeah, he's a jerk Probably. like that. Seriously. Yes, I know. Wow, really? <laughs> I, st- I, I, I stood by these guys, jackass. Mostly because they were his fan, but that's a different story. <laughs> yeah, we didn't know what we were for Ken. I don't know. It's just like, oh, yeah, whatever. Anyway, it's, it's, it's an interesting, it's interesting. So uh, let, go back to sort of the staffing thing, because I'm always curious about that because the, the beauty of someone like I think Lloyd and Kim was, I, I don't think their intent was ever to, to build something and, and, and probably sell it to a multinational. I mean, in the back of anybody's head when they start companies, ultimately, I think you're thinking of selling someday. But I think they actually liked what they were doing. They had a cool thing. And it maybe did get time. And and I think maybe they realized that if there was a ceiling, it was probably going to be them, right? Because you can take a company to a certain point and then you do need. To to take that next leap, the amount of capital investment. Exactly. And did you want to do that at that point of your life? You know, you're probably financially in a good spot, a little bit older. I mean, we did our thing. As long as someone doesn't screw up this baby, give it to someone else. I'm not worried about them at all. Let's just say that. Exactly. <laughs> and, and that's, that's perfect for them because you know what, that's, that's what they did. Good on them. How did, how, Ooh. so, but you did have, I mean, I mean, I think like from my perspective, I think when this happened, you and I had talked about it too, is that for me, I don't like the larger companies and to be swallowed would have probably bothered me. I mean, I would have probably done what you did. You stick it through for the short time, see what it was see how it plays out. Like you've gone three years, which is pretty impressive. And you don't seem to be ready to jump, which is really cool. But which also shows that craft has been not that bad as a parent because they're letting you do your own things. Your staff though, how were they? I mean, I know, I know some of the people, I mean, I knew a lot of you people. I know some who left probably once they knew the announcement, but before it was really done, done. And probably jumped maybe a bit too early. I'm sure there's others that were thinking like, what does this mean to us? Like how, how, like what happens to my great little company? And I walk in and I know everybody now this monster is going to take me and I'm not going to know anybody. Well, whatever. You're right. Some did jump a little too early. I think Yeah, two people in particular. Yeah. I mean, of course it's their own decision. And, you know, whenever anyone leaves um, an organization that I'm in charge of, right? Like you basically have two, two or three options. You can be all pissed off and bent out of shape because you're losing someone great, or you can celebrate with them and say, well, I gave you experience and knowledge and learning such that you're taking it somewhere else that's yeah. better for you. Awesome. Right? Mm-hmm. Or I, you know, you've, it's, I can't pay you as much as you're getting somewhere else, or the the learning opportunity has, has come to a bit of an end or a dead end. Then go, I'll go for it. You know, I mean, I'll be your competitor. I'll be your friend or whatever. So off you go. So, yeah, I think a couple of people could have learned a little bit more that would have been very useful for them professionally, but that was their decision. And they're both in great places now. Um, there was a lot of, a lot of discussions and, and, you know, both in groups and in person with me for people who are concerned what's going to happen and so on. Um, and that took probably a year and a half or more for people to settle really? and stand, right? And, um, you know, quite understandably, I think it's a normal process, although I've only been through this recently once, you know, at this level in a company anyway, um, where people were um, frustrated, right? Because the new process is a lot more onerous than what we did before. Mm-hmm. Right? And so as a person in a leadership position, right? Uh, you have to listen, you have to help them, you have to um, give them the tools to to make their individual role or, or scenario a little bit better. 
but you also know me, Ken. I I got to a certain point, right, where I'm like, look, right, I'm going to listen to you, but now I'm going to listen to you for about five minutes. And if you don't have a solution or a way this is going to get better, like, I don't have time for you because I deal with people at the head office 10 times more than anyone here. And if you think they're just sitting around looking for ways to cook up ideas that make ethical beings life more difficult, like, they are doing way more than all of us here within the system that we have to figure out. So like it gets to a point where you, you care about people and their, their state of mind, but it's like, we have to get to solutions, right? That's what right. we're getting paid for. Um, right. We've been given the luxury of not being part of it entirely and we're allowed to do stuff. We've kept some autonomy. Um, are we in the system? We have to be because we're, our EPCs are part of the mother tree that, that yeah. It was an asset purchase, not a share purchase, right? So we are part of the whole. We're not a subsidiary, right? So, no, you are owned by Kraft. You're it. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. it was a share deal. We could have stayed as ethical being. Right. But we're, we're, it was an asset purchase deal. So like all our paychecks come from Kraft, all the HR. And so right. we'll have to understand that that level of integration um, may have been a little bit more of a difficult road for us to go. But we're there now, right? Like we can't untangle it. Trust me, I've thought about it in, in <laughs> some of the moments, right? I think I'm happening as quickly as I wanted them to, but like this is where we exist now. You know, there's amazing things coming in the future if we do it right. But what happened with Lloyd and Kim ended on August 18th, uh, 2019. Like that's that's it. It's long gone, man. Yeah. It's gone. And if you if you don't prepare yourself for the next chapter or whatever, right? Like it's gonna be a lot harder for you. We're blessed with selling an amazing product, right? Um, and still, although the commodity cost of coffee is quite high now, right? You know, get back every pound of coffee we we sell is, you know, it's doing it for people in the, the producing communities, and we can't get away from that entirely, right? So. And they've let you hang on to that that type. You're, you, so they really have it. I mean, outside of I get obviously the process of systems, but yeah, they're all, still allowing you to run. How you always run. be. Yeah, we'll always be fair trade. We'll always be organic. Aaron DeLazar still does all the, the buying. The still there. The, still here. That's you know, awesome. We, we do roast occasionally in another facility when we're over capacity here, but that's all our green. That's all his roast profiles, right? Everything is still controlled by us. Right? Um, and I've had to, you know, there were some, some hard learnings, right, in terms of forecasting and aggressive budgeting and so on, which... Um, I love the enthusiasm and the passion for the brand and, but we just have to be very careful and you know it well, cause I know you're a coffee guy, Phil, I don't know if you're a coffee drinker or not, but it's love like, coffee. you can't, it just has to be treated differently than, than condiment and stuff like that. Like the, the movement of inventory through our warehouses and customer warehouses has to be monitored, in, monitored in a way that craft wasn't a, because their other products don't require it, right? Right. Uh, it took me a while to to dig into the system and figure out where we were missing, and we fixed that, right? So our on-hand inventory in the, the big warehouse is, is six weeks right now, so we're pumping it out to the customers in, in great shape. and Nice, fresh product, then. That's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we had to shift a few things, and I got carried away to the, the topic we were discussing earlier that – you can get any meeting. You can turnkey this into the biggest retailers. I'm like, I'm a sales and marketing guy, right? I'm the COO now and I have it. But like, I was like, fuck yeah, let's go. Like everywhere. Yeah. And we got ahead of ourselves a little bit, right? And that was just genuine enthusiasm for the brand by Kraft and by me. And, you know, so we're retool we retooled a little bit on the, the system side and um, and we're in, in a great, great spot right now. So. What's the growth been like since um, the sell? Have you exploded more into the States? Canada gotten bigger? Uh, you can tell yeah. me what you can tell me. You don't have to give me, you know. No, no, no. Sure. I'm just cutting it up in, in uh, so the U.S. we've doubled for sure, right? Um, the, all of the U.S. is uh, is controlled by Kraft Heinz U.S., so I'm just basically like a consultant to them. So right. they've changed the packaging. I don't know if, this is like what our bag looks like in the U S so it's mm -hmm. still not a ton different, different, <clears throat> different, though. different. And, uh, well, yeah, so we, they put us into, um, 
Publix, Walmart, Kroger in about four months. So like we went from about 1800 doors to 6,000, right? Like oh, in, in very, very quick, quick. That's system. fast, eh? Yeah. yeah. And so they've pulled back a little bit and they're starting to get a little bit more grassroots in terms of the marketing because we're still unknown largely, like 100% in the US. Right. Canada, I think we were like 30 and then a little bit, 30 and then 40 over the two years. This year it's tapered off a little bit just because there's the what it is. Still, right. And so. Mm-hmm. We expanded heavy into some of the customers and, and um, you know, there's always a bit of contraction if you got too many SKUs. Um, but year over year, you know, we're probably flat this year, but that's Xing out all the US and food service that right. have lost to COVID. So the growth has been there for sure. Right? And the ability, you know, we're running out of time because I do have to jump off. The ability yeah, yeah. to analyze the business with the you know, the, the teams that they have in place in terms of consumption and analytics is, is unbelievable. Right. You know, like we were kind of like finger to the wind before, cause I couldn't afford Nielsen numbers and stuff. Now we have access to everything. Right. Yeah. Now you've had you know, so, too much data. It's, it's, you know, not there's any such well, thing, but you know what I mean? There's so much there. Well, you know, the bump charts and the, it's wild, right. But it's, cool though. it's uh, the business is so data driven that if you, if you aren't on that, you're, you're kind of probably wandering down the wrong street, right? So. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, it took us a year to get to, or a year and a half of bugging you to get to this point. And then, of course, you screwed up the time and didn't give me the full hour. Like the last <laughs> time. But that's okay. I'm, you know, I'm used to you. I, I, know how you, I know how you play. I'm going to be polite because I appreciate the opportunity. You're so full of shit, and that's fine. I still love you. We can do it again. Do it I think again. that's one thing I'd like to do because I, I think I – think I think what we talked about is cool, but there's, there's a lot of really cool story behind it. And I think for a lot of small companies, it's really sometimes the mentality of, of, of what you're trying to do a lot of, we had, it's funny, we had Patrick Higgins on last night and we were talking yeah. about the same thing you talked about, how different the States is versus Canada, how many Canadian companies look at it and think 10 times, 12 times, we should just go not understanding that it's six or seven different countries, not one, because each region is different and your distribution models are different, et cetera. So I think in some ways I'd like to really go down those paths, maybe yeah. on another um, yeah. chat with you, I love if it. you can find time, uh, yeah. but it would be something kind of cool. Cause I do, I think, yeah. I think it's just interesting. And the fact he's still stuck around and being able to manage through craft, I mean, it's pretty impressive. Well, I'm, I've only worked for two brands for the last 25 years, right? Whistler yeah. and Ethical Bean. So, um, whenever I interview someone and I stole it from my wife, Janet, right. And you interview someone, you go through the nuts and bolts and then you say, you know, what's your superpower. Right. And it throws people off every time they're like, yeah. what, like x-ray vision. I'm like, no, like in a work sense, like sure, I don't, x-ray vision, I don't That's care. Cool. And fly. If you can't sell coffee, it doesn't really matter. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But mine is loyalty, right? Like I'm super loyal. Right. Yeah. And Ethical Bean has done amazing things for me professionally, financially, and for my my family. And I do think, right, um, there is still a lot of work to do for us to to get this brand positioned properly within a a mega corporation like Ben and Jerry's and like some of the, like we're almost there. We've done some things well, we've learned a lot, Um, but, you know, I want, I want to position the brand to be in the the best spot for success because it's a great brand, right? It's awesome. And we have the opportunity with a few sort of tweaks and, and dial-ins here and there to, to really to really crush it and like make it sing. Right. So that's what keeps me going when I'm when I'm battling, you know, um, resourcing and right. pack and R and and all this stuff, right? Like uh, they <laughs> I have some interesting conversations. Well, I'll just leave it in that. Save them for another day. Save them for another day. Yeah. Save them for another day. That's Baron, awesome, thank you. Thank you for joining us. We'll we'll get you off so you can you can go to your meeting. But uh, thanks for being here. We'll we'll um we'll send you some options because we we'd love to bring you back on. Oh, I, I do to- feel like there's there's like there's a whole nother conversation that could happen here that's yeah. really cool to have. So yeah. Yeah. But we'll put the, we'll put the links on for ethical being yeah. on on the the podcast links. Um, Your if someone wanted as well. to find you or talk to you, maybe yeah. understand a little bit more how Happy the to. world works. How do they reach you? LinkedIn. 
Just through LinkedIn, yeah, it's fine. Or email me, Darren at ethicalbean.com. Okay, perfect. Okay, perfect. Yeah, come by for coffee sometime. You know where to find Buddy, me. I got to get out of this house, okay? I haven't left this house in 18 months, 19 months. And I know where you are, trust me. It's all good. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will definitely come down. Okay, take care. Okay, take care, buddy. Right, Have take a good care, meeting. Brian. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, right, yeah thanks. Good job, bud. Bye. It's a cool story. I wish you had more That's time. Cool. Yeah. Right. Because it's just, you know, like when I, even when you started with, with Lloyd, they were not a big company. I mean, they were, mm -hmm. you know, just the typical entrepreneurs, right? I mean, you just, you do what they can and you're, you're just busting doors. And if you're a go-getter, you can tell, like, he just loves, loves the, 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 the selling aspect and stuff, but um, he's definitely turned into a whole different person. So that's definitely a, much more of a management, much more of, of all that stuff. And he was doing that even with ethical, obviously, but I'm sure Kraft provided a whole ton of systems, et cetera. He seems a, a little, I, I, I think I would have been interesting to meet him when he was younger because he seems to have kind of that little bit of vinegar edge. Oh, he's, he's full of piss and vinegar. That, uh, yeah, oh, 100%. Yeah. yeah. 100%. Like he, that's, 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 that's totally him. But see, but it's funny because that's what I liked about him. Like even having meetings with him, like we get into arguments and, you know, just like it was, but I really like Viren. I, I think he was just, he was a very interesting fellow. He had a different way of looking at things and interesting way to look at things. And I just loved what they were trying to do. And I love mm -hmm. the local. They were, you know, mm -hmm. at that point they were, they were small East fan company but they were, they were getting shit done and they were trying different things and he wasn't scared to try. Yeah, he's a bright yeah, guy, they're, right? They're cool. It is. It's a cool story. Right. Yeah. And it's one of those stories, what I like about more than anything, because when he, I'll be frank, when he took the, when the transaction happened, I told myself, fuck man, what are you going to do? He's like, you, how you, you can't work for craft. Like you can't, man. You, there's no way you're going to be able to work for someone like that. Right. He goes, well, you yeah, know, I, I've got, I've got to do it for at least a year, see what it's yeah. like. Yeah. Um, but I think what he's probably learning is sort of what he alluded to. And I, that's why I want to get more into it is that, you know, as, as cool as small companies are, even like the ones we work for is once you start putting systems in, once you start putting procedures in as, as ugly as it feels because it's rules and regs and shit like that, that's the stuff that allows you to, to, to yeah. grow because it plugs up all the holes yeah. that, that leak the most water collectively. Yeah not individually. Right. And I think she's probably noticed that is that like all of a sudden he's got money, man. You want to go on a list? Yeah, go. Well, it's, it's um, like the, the sweet spot almost is, and it, it like, so it, when J and J, when we were, when we were Pfizer and we got bought by J and J and J and J put J and J Pfizer and um, the Tylenol guys, McNeil, McNeil all together into the same company. It did. It took us almost 18 months to find a normal stride and probably like two, two and a half years, three years before everything was kind of like flowing. But, the, right? but it's, it has to, there's, there's yeah. three different companies with three different ways of looking at the world. Yeah. Three days of, yeah. three days, three different ways of pushing paper through a system. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like people don't yeah. think of that. There's so many changes. Right. And I was, yeah. you know, I, cause I, I did know a bunch of the people uh, at ethical and one thing, you know, because I know Viren well enough is that he does worry about his people. Like he doesn't want, like, and I think Lloyd would have probably been, but just as adamant is that I don't want people hurt in this. Mm -hmm. If this is going to happen and you guys are going to take us, we can't leave carnage behind. Like we got to protect our people. Yeah. Right. And it sounds like Kraft was, was more than happy to play with that, which is again, yeah. pretty impressive. I mean, yeah, I'm actually kind of impressed how they've managed this to be very frank with you. It's a great brand. It's it's a great yeah, but brand. You know what, you know what big done, companies are like? Great things with it. Yeah, but big yeah, companies have. have a they, tendency to actually bury brands yeah. if they're not careful. And I I don't and I I think that if we worked hard we could probably find a whole whack of examples, but truthfully I think the ones that we named like Ben and Jerry's. Yeah. Um like ethical, right? Are are ones that really stand out, right? All the other ones really didn't go that well. Um, most don't there's a lot you know the the white water ones none of those have really gone i think because the, the intent that, is different you know, right yeah. when the intent is to basically go in increase revenue drop costs yeah i mean typically that that's that's human carnage that that sort of flows out of that how do you build culture when 
you know, if you don't know if you're going to be alive tomorrow morning in, in the organization, it just doesn't really, I, to me, it's not conducive to it, right? It just, yeah. And again, that's why I was pretty impressed with how Kraft managed this. Yeah. And people who know me over the years know that I'm not a huge fan of Kraft. I didn't like dealing with them when I was a buyer. I didn't give a shit about their brands, even though I needed a bunch of them, obviously. But I was not a huge fan because they played in a different world. They 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 dictated to you what you could do. And I used to hate that. I thought, well, screw you. This is my company, not yours. I, our demo, I was smiling awkwardly because I was that buyer who cut off a big brand at the knees. Uh, we, we thought uh, it was one of the pharmaceutical guys who didn't come to play. Yeah. And so I, I had something in my category that I didn't need it. So we cut the entire lineup out. Um, so I, I, I felt for him when he was talking about that because I, I remember I've done that. it too, I buddy. Remember, I, I, uh, I just remember making yeah. the phone call, right? And the guy that I really liked that guy too, right? And poor guy was like, wait, you, you're doing what? You can't, you can't do you, that. You can't do that. I'm like, I can. And then, you know, and then, and then you're kind of like, the grit inside of you, you know, like we're, we're pretty nice people, but I, we, neither of us, we can be mean if we need to be right. And I was like, don't fucking tell me what I can and can't do. Like, yeah. I know these categories as well as you do. Right. So yeah. don't treat me like an imbecile. Like I didn't, I I'm not a pawn in somebody's game. I said, I could give up these categories as part of the negotiating place. So you're gone. <laughs> so I've done that. And I so, said, don't you know, it's not like, personal. Yeah. I said, I'm not blaming you and I'm not mad at you. Your no. company made this decision. You yeah. delivered the message. Well, now I get to deliver my message. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my message is I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. But you can't do that. Everybody and nobody else is going to do that. Well, I'm happy for everybody else. They can do whatever they damn well please. I don't them. give a shit. I, I don't care. Right. And yeah. there's you know, and I'm sure you got this, you know, I mean my longevity was a little longer in the position I was in. So I made a couple of those moves. I had the eat crow on a few of them because yeah 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 Sometimes yeah, that happens fucking, but, didn't, you, know. I'm, you know what my best one because people who listen will know you know i was so pissed at craft like i was it wasn't craft it was heinz i was so fucking mad at heinz right and it was re- i shouldn't have been mad at them i was buying stuff offline from the states and you can't bring ketchup heinz ketchup into canada because there's, there's trademark and copyright laws oh, between the two countries because right, 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 the recipes right. are different yeah yeah and yeah. i didn't give a shit well heinz did so we got the letters. Uh, I had to. Yeah, I had to. Because, so you know, at that point, you know what I thought? have to give a shit. Yeah, well, okay. But I, you know what? I def- Fuck you, man. I'm discontinuing Heinz ketchup. That's it. It's gone. So I discontinued. I think I brought in Almers or Del Monte or one of those yeah, brands yeah, yeah, yeah. because there was an alternative. Yeah. Well, that turned out to be not a, not a great move. It would have worked a couple years later when Heinz pulled out of Canada. And okay. people were all over that, but I was a little on the early side, so I had to relist it. <laughs> I was not happy, but you know, okay, that's fine. You gotta, you gotta do that. But yeah, it was the same thing. It's that you know, don't tell me what I can and cannot do. Yeah, I'll do whatever yeah. I damn well please. These are yeah, my stores, yeah. my customers. Yeah. That's it. A few, I, I got. Yeah, and then basically get it back at you because well, how'd, how'd that work out for you, Einstein? Well, not that well. But then there's a bunch of others. Like Interviewer's point is, it's not personal. I don't. They're not. It's it's a game. And sometimes you just get caught in the cog of it. Yeah, that's true. And he'll he'll pull out. I'm sure he'll get his listings back. You can tell he's persistent. Yeah, he doesn't even seem worried about it, honestly. No, because I know he, I think he, well, yeah. I think again, if this was three years ago, he's worried. Because yeah, if it yeah, was, yeah, no, because that, like that, that's a big companies, deal. It's a big that's, deal, right? Like you lose 8%, an 8%, 10% like, company. Holy fuck, right? Like, I mean, that's, that that's a be, handful of jobs. Well, that, that could be catastrophic. You know, like, that's your yeah, buying yeah. power. Yeah. that's your that's that's people like that's a that's a big big yeah, hit yeah. yeah yeah big hit yeah right but again when you're with craft maybe you can weather those storms or with a larger company you can yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway interesting yeah we were glad to get get him on we'll uh we're sorry it's a bit short today but but we'll, we'll have him back, back on in the new year uh and there'll be more yeah yeah that's cool yeah. awesome that's awesome all right uh, buddy okay have a wonderful weekend uh, yeah, I well, I might talk to you. Oh, let it somebody th- shut the recording now. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks for goodbye, joining us. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks for that's joining just us. for Mark, so that we said <laughs> goodbye to our people and we didn't cut you off. Have a wonderful weekend. <laughs>